Hi guys, Chris here again. Um, I want to talk to you today about um, uprising and downrising wedges. Uh, last week we talked about the triangle pattern. It's actually a very similar thing to the triangle. Um, but yeah, it's basically when both kind of like the trend lines and the line on the other side are pointing in one direction, either up uh, for an uprising wedge or down for a down rising wedge. Um, and I'll just explain what I'm what I'm talking about now. So you can see here we've got an upward trend. We've got a low, a high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, a higher high, a higher low, and then a higher high. <coughs> um, you know what you would normally expect is as you guys know as we've explained on the course um you would put your trend line like so beneath these lows and then you know what you expect to see is the highs actually touching the channel line and then retracing down to the trend line so in other words we would expect the high to hit this channel and then the low to come down and then the high to come up so something like that um, quite often when you've had a little run up or a little run down <coughs> the momentum of the bears or the bulls isn't quite as strong anymore so whilst you're getting nice higher lows the higher highs aren't quite as strong. So instead of getting this nice bouncing off the channel line, what you'll find is that there's actually a shallower angle, like so. So when you see this, this is what we call a wedge. Um, so yeah, we're still getting the higher highs and the higher lows, but um, the the momentum from the bulls isn't quite as strong anymore. The bears are then trying to whack that down. You can see that just broke there, but we had a wick there, and the bears just pushed it straight down. So, you know, you'll you'll often see this on this example will be at the end of a run up, and how we trade these is we would measure the height of the uh, wedge. So we get our little crosshair tool, and we can measure from the top here down to the bottom or in a, on a vertical line and I can see that's about four, 447 pips so the rule with a, a ascending wedge or an uprising wedge is that it should break downwards normally um, kind of 70% of the time it will, it will break downwards you know, obviously look on the higher time frames, guys. Um, you know, make sure if you make sure um, that it makes sense with what you're seeing on the higher time frames, as we explained in the course. Um, but you can see here, as it broke, as we had a break past this line, um, and then we can measure down about our 440 pips, then you could have a take profit. Yeah, so again, that would line up with this um, uh, level of support. So it makes sense to have a take profit up there. Um, you would get in at the break of that particular pattern or shape. Let's make sure it's correct. So yeah, as it broke past this level, level of um, support here, you could um, have a pending there. And then, you know, there's a couple of ways that you can place your stop loss. So you could just place it above this high. And that would give you, would pretty much give you a one to one. Uh, but again, that's not ideal. It's not an ideal risk reward ratio. So you might even like to, you know, choose a halfway point beneath or between these two lines. So look back in the past, see if there's, I'll put that like roughly halfway. I can see there's a level of resistance there. So it would make sense to me to put my stop loss just above this level of resistance in case it did come up. And that gives me 
near uh, near enough a, a two to one, or one point eight to one. Um, so yeah, so the rules uh, with a downwards wedge is really just exactly the same. Um, basically, it's when your trend line and your channel line start to compress um, at the end of a run, and then you just wait for a break of that um, channel, and then you can trade it in the opposite direction. The other thing that you're going to find very useful when identifying these is to look at the MACD, look out for the divergence here as well. So you can see from that peak to that peak to that peak, we're, we're making the higher highs. Okay, we're making the higher highs, but look what the MACD is doing. It's very relevant. Yeah, I love to look out for the when you're seeing these patterns, just get extra confirmation with the MACD, just look out for divergence, and then that gives you all the confidence you need to actually place a penny there and enter a trade um, based on that charting pattern. Um, so I, I hope that it's helped, guys. Um, if you've got any questions about anything, then as always, I'm, I'm here. Um, come and see me, pop into the office, pop onto the chat room, uh, send me an email, smoke signals, bird mail, however you want to contact us, uh, we're here to help, guys. Thanks a lot, eh?